Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Nintendo Chit Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ray. This is episode 48 for June 13th, 2020. Be sure to hit that like button for us, leave your comments below, and subscribe. And don't forget, the audio-only version is available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and more. Let's get started. Okay, it's time to bring on our writer and editor for NintendoReport.com, Samantha Leinhard. Samantha, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. How are you this week? How was uh, the week as far as releases go, too? Doing pretty good as far as releases go. Not too much this week. A bunch of little games, as we've noticed. There are those every week, but nothing, nothing major. Yeah, I was trying to pick a few here to talk about, but nothing really caught my eye specifically. But I, I have a couple anyway, but... um. I guess we'll have you go first. Did anything I capture your interest for this week? Well, one that uh, has my interest in a way is Evan's Remains, which came out on June 11th. And actually, for another site that I write for, I'm writing a review for that. So <laughs> that'll be up sometime in the near future. Awesome. So you have first hand experience with that. That's cool. <laughs> we have a game called Project Warlock which released this week. Uh, what date was that? Let's see here, on um, June 11th, actually. And this is a first-person action adventure game. It looks pretty cool, it has kind of a retro aesthetic to it, like the older games back like, in the 90s go. Uh, there's like 60 levels across different kind of um, environments from um, Arctic bases and sands of Egypt as well, so it looks really interesting. And that, of course, again, is Project Warlock. And also a little tower arcade game called Space Jacked came out as well. So if you like uh, arcade-based tower defense games and aliens and stuff, uh, check out this game as well. It's less than $10 in eShop too. All right, so anything else for this week? We had about, again, 19 games or so, but yeah, mostly smaller games here uh, for this week. Yeah, we've also nothing... got some uh, DLC this week. The game Prison oh, Architect yeah. got a DLC expansion called Island Bound. Yeah, actually, I had to look up Prison Architects to see what that was all about. <laughs> it just sounds really strange, you know, Prison Architects, hmm, that's pretty cool. Okay, and that wraps up the Nintendo releases for this week. Let's traverse over into the Nintendo News Bite. Samantha, how was the news for this week? Uh, this week, of course, we've got all these E3 replacements of sorts, all sorts of digital showcases and things. So there's several announcements, actually, several things to look at. Yeah. Awesome. So I guess we'll kick things off here with an old game, in a sense. Um, Alex Kidd in America World. This is the DX version. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so this is a remake of the original 1986 platform Alex Kidd in Miracle World. So this is coming with not only all of the levels from the original, except they're going to be revamped, they're going to have better graphics, some gameplay adjustments, things like that, but also with new levels and new modes as well. And for the people who just want to play the original, they also said there's going to be a classic mode that you'll be able to play just like the original release. Very cool. This is like an ongoing thing with some of these older games here getting kind of redone and remade, so I'm kind of enjoying that. But uh, yeah, this came from 1986 on the Mega Drive, so that's, that's pretty cool. All right, moving along to some more classic games, actually, too, Samantha. What's next in the News Bites here? Right, so this one, we actually had a, a report about the leak that this was coming in oh, yeah. one of the uh, gaming news segments, I believe, a week or two ago. Uh, this is the Namco Museum Archives Volume 1 and Volume 2, which is the Western version of the Namco Collection. Uh, it's been split into two volumes here. Uh, I believe each has uh, 10 games, maybe? Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm not sure. Like <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, so these are two collections of classic Namco games. Uh, there's four that were only in the Japanese release, but here we've got uh, volume one. We've got the list here has Dig Dug, Dragon Buster, Dragon Spirit, The New Legend, Galaxian, Mappy, Pac Man, Pac Man Champion. Championship Edition, the, the 8 bit D mastered version, uh, Flatterhouse, One Paku Graffiti, Sky Kid, The Tower of Draga, and uh, I'm not sure how you say that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then Volume 2 has Battle City, Dig Dug 2, Dragon Buster 2, Galaga Ga Plus, which says it's the 8 bit consoleized version. I'm not sure what. 
of Legacy of the Wizard, Maxi Land, Mendel Palace, Hackland, Rolling Thunder, and Super Z. So quite a collection, actually. Not too bad at all. I kind of like some of those games, so I may have to check those out in the Nanco Museum Archives Volume 1 and Volume 2. And that's coming out again on June 18th, so just about five days away. All right, so I guess some of the bigger news here is next uh, regarding some new Paper Mario, the origami can get an overview trailer, Samantha. Tell us more. Yes, yeah, so the original trailer, as you're probably aware, <laughs> left people with a lot of questions. <laughs> a lot things, of questions. People were saying, is it going to be an RPG? What's the comic going to be like? Are there really partners? What's going on? And, you know, people were analyzing every single frame of the trailer. Exactly. <laughs> figure things out. But now they released an almost six minute long overview trailer that goes into more detail. So from this, I my feelings are even more mixed than they were before, if possible, <laughs> because <laughs> we've got the combat system, which seems like it's probably not an RPG. There doesn't seem to be any sign of experience or leveling up. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they introduce the companions in more details, and they do seem to at least be temporary partners who will be accompanying you. And they also show it off a lot of the game's environments and different gameplay features and things. So what do you think then overall so far from what we know, what we've seen, um, I guess, comparing it to the latest um, game in the series, Color Splash? Yes, I don't know. I'm conflicted. I was hoping it would be closer to the originals, and it seems like it is trying to like move a little closer in that direction because well, we do have partners, although they might be temporary, and they do have names, although uh, the Toad has the name Professor Toad, which isn't exactly <laughs> the most unique name they could have given him. Right. But, you know, that looks interesting. And Battle System, well, it's not an RPG, but it you know, looks like it could be fun. And then they introduced the bosses, and I've been hoping that they would get away from this obsession with the paper, the paper mm -hmm. aspect of things. Like, they just become obsessed with it. And now we're fighting stationary supplies. <laughs> That's not what I was hoping to see. Yeah. <laughs> They really stick with their themes, don't they? <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so this game comes out, is it this month? I forget. I think so, July. right? Oh, July. Okay, so not too far it's away. Like July yeah. 17th or something like that. Yes, yeah, so about a month away. Um, See, so, yeah, I mean, this game's pretty much finished. Uh, we need to learn a little bit more, I guess, as we go through here. Probably get some more trailers, some more information regarding it. But this is the overview trailer, so this is the overview of the game. Um, so what you see is pretty much what we're going to be getting, you know, as far as what we can tell right now. So I guess we will learn more in the next week or two here, Samantha. We'll kind of go to the next game, I guess, in the news bites is Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. Gameplay footage was actually shown during IGN Summer of Gaming 2020. So what's this game all about? Yeah, so this is an upcoming action game based on the Samurai Jack series, and I will admit I have absolutely no familiarity with Samurai Jack same whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> I've never here. watched it. <laughs> I'm not sure I could have even told you anything about it. Right. Uh, but when I was watching the gameplay footage, I noticed that you know, it looks like it might be a fun game. Like, I, yeah. I have no familiarity with the source material, but the, the game looks like it's going to be fun. Yeah, it looks pretty action-packed. The combat looks pretty good and fun as well. And, uh, you know, the actual aesthetics and graphics looks pretty good too, so... Looks pretty good. So we have the trailer up here on NintendoReport.com for this one as well. So if you missed that, go check it out. And we have a horror game to talk about too, Samantha. So tell us more about the next horror game we have information for. A 2D horror game called uh, return one-way trip and this is coming out for the switch playstation 4 xbox one and pc on september 29th and when i was watching the trailer i was thinking this looks very familiar why does this look so familiar and then i finally realized that several years ago actually i played it must have been like an early beta version or an early oh, wow. demo or something so I, I remember enjoying it even though it's been a while so my memories are a little fuzzy so uh, this should be a good one you've got uh, two different playable characters and the story that takes place in both the past and the present so that should be uh, pretty good awesome this is like a, i guess 2d side scrolling is it right yes very cool it's a puzzle adventure horror game so you'll be uh, walking around side-scrolling format and solving puzzles and 
must have been a weird feeling for you to see that you kind of this looks familiar to you. like what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i couldn't remember what it yeah. was and i was thinking it was a game that i had already played and i was thinking why does this look so similar to that other <laughs> game and then when i finally started thinking about it, i was like wait did i play an early version of this and since i had uh, downloaded the demo or beta or whatever it was i went through my computer's files and found it <laughs> so oh, wow. i realized it is the same game <laughs> That's quite the experience. It's cool. All right. <laughs> so that wraps up the news bites here for this week. You can check it out at nintendoreport.com for all the latest news and information regarding Nintendo games. All right. Going into the time portal now, Samantha, we have the weeks or the week for June 7th through June, June 13th. We have some Legend of Zelda here. What's this one? So we're starting with June 7th, 2004, which was the North American release of The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure. Did you play this title? I had it. I remember starting it. I don't think I ever finished it. <laughs> I'm not sure how far I got, but I do... I was playing it alone, so it was, it was like a multiplayer game, but oh, you yeah. could play alone if you wanted to, and you'd be controlling all four links. And I remember controlling the four leaves, but I know we're <laughs> forgetting very far. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think it was more fun, of course, having friends be able to play with. Uh, <laughs> I guess this was the, also what inspired Triforce Heroes, then. is that right? I know there was another Four Swords before this. Uh, I think that one was just called Four Swords and was yeah. bundled with uh, A Link to the Past, maybe? One of the releases of Link to the Past? Might have been, so, but, yeah. yeah. But I think Triforce Heroes, the idea of cooperative Legend of Zelda, I think, came out yeah. of these games. Yeah, I remember playing uh, Triforce Heroes back, I guess, what, it was probably like five, six years ago already. That was pretty fun wow. to play <laughs> online with some friends, but yeah, very cool. All right, now we have Killer7. That came out for the GameCube back on June 9th, 2005. And uh, what is this game, Killer7? Yeah, so this is another GameCube game, and describing what it is or trying to explain <laughs> what it is is not easy. <laughs> it's sort of an action-adventure shooter thing. Uh, you play a group of assassins who are all uh, manifestations of one person, and <laughs> trying to explain the plot would be nearly <laughs> impossible. <laughs> this is a very uh, strange game. This, uh, at the time, it was kind of received with mixed feelings by people, but it's one of those games that, in retrospect, uh, it's become a cult hit, so you've got people who like that weird Killer7 game <laughs> that came out, and now it's, now it's more popular. Very cool. All right, and then we have some Castlevania to talk about as well for June 11, 2001. And which Castlevania game is this? This is Castlevania Circle of the Moon. We had previously talked about one of the Game Boy Advance Castlevania games a few weeks ago, or last oh, month yeah. actually, in the time portal. And so this one was the first of the three Game Boy Advance Castlevania games, Circle of the Moon. And so it seems like it was fairly well received when it came out and was successful, but uh, it's actually not considered canon. They declared it non-canon and officially removed it from the Castlevania timeline. So it oh, just kind of stands on its own out there by itself. <laughs> <laughs> that is really interesting. I don't think I've ever played this particular Castlevania game. Um, me and Castlevania, I don't know, kind of love and hate relationship with that series, but uh, that's cool. So that's for Game Boy Advance back in 2001, on June 11th. Wraps up the time portal then for this week. Thanks, Samantha, for doing that. All right, Samantha, do you have anything you want to talk about or plug before we head out with the podcast? One more thing I remembered to mention when we were talking about Killer7 there, and I was saying about how uh, strange it is. Uh, it's one of the games by Suda51. So if you're familiar okay. with his games, uh, Silver Case, No More Heroes, it's, yeah. it's one of those. <laughs> it's gotcha. very different, though. It's one of the, <laughs> one of the weirder ones. But, yeah, yeah it's a for sure. Game. Awesome. Very cool. Anything you want to plug? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Samantha, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thanks. And that wraps up the Nintendo Chit Chat Podcast, episode 48. I'm your host, Eddie Ray. Thanks for watching and listening. Be sure to hit that like button for us. Leave comments for us as well. And subscribe. I'm Eddie Ray. We'll see you back here next time.